Hello and welcome back to Football and Next Moneyball. Today we have the third strategy video for the channel, with the other two coming back when I first started it back in August last year. So this is the first one I've done for a while and I'm hoping this can be useful for people. As I'm sure most of you are aware, the main focus of my channel is player picks with detailed analysis. If you're new to the channel and you didn't know that, then make sure you take a look at the Pick of the Day playlist and check those out. For this video, I thought I would cover the most popular question I get asked, which is, when should you sell a player? Now there's no real perfect strategy for when to sell a player, so instead I'm going to give you my strategy and hopefully you can either use it or build on it and create your own. My personal strategy is by no means the optimal strategy for maximizing profit, but it gives me a way to somewhat objectively make the decisions. When it comes to selling players, I have four criteria that I check against. Having a set strategy has been a huge benefit to keeping me sane and not letting the fear of missing out get out of control. One thing you need to remember when selling a player is that there's only ever one perfect time to sell. So unless you manage to time it perfectly, which is highly unlikely, then you need to get comfortable with being in a constant state of being too early or too late. Before we get going, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to follow me on Twitter, then you can search for at Index Moneyball. And there's referral links in the description if you want to sign up for Football Index, Football Index Edge and for Football Index Club. There's also a link to my Patreon page where you can help to support the channel, which gives access to some bonus picks, portfolio reviews, and other added benefits. To start off, I want to address the easiest of the possible questions when selling a player. Should I instant sell or market sell? If I feel that I need the money quickly, as there's potential for a player to rise immediately, and if depositing is not an option, then I do sometimes instant sell a player. But the rule I have for this is if the instant sell price is more than 3% below market sell, then I try not to do it. The second situation I would consider instant selling is when there's a very strong case that I think a player is going to rise or fall very quickly. In this case, if I expect the gain to be more than double the spread, or if I think the market sell price will fall below the instant sell price, maybe after a player goes off with a season ending injury and the spread hasn't opened up yet, then I'll take the hit. But in the 20 months that I've been on the index, this has rarely happened to me. For all other situations, I would market sell. The one strategy to assist in avoiding the instant sell button is to keep a cash balance. Although I must admit, I've not managed to do this yet as I usually have far more players that I want to buy than cash available. And I try to avoid being too reactive of a trader anyway. So now to address the more difficult question. When do I sell a player? Picking players at this point on the index's growth often only seems hard because there's just so many options. But once you have made a choice and you took the leap, choosing when to cash out again can cause some real headaches. To start off, let's look at the reasons you may want to sell a player in the first place. Firstly, you could have a player whose price is stagnated, whether in profit, loss or breaking even. Watching a player's price flounder for months at a time can test anyone's resolve, especially when you see rockets firing off all around them as the market grows. Secondly, you've got the losers. Now in my experience, these are the hardest decisions to make. Did you see something that wasn't there? Or has the market not yet caught up to your vision? Either way, having the red on your portfolio among a sea of green can be a real downer. Then finally, you have every trader's favorite problem, when to take the profit. When you hold a player through a major rise, the loss aversion kicks in, risking seeing all that profit come crashing down if you hold on too long, or missing out on more if you get off the train too early can be a very difficult call to make. There are some other more complex situations which may lead you to debate selling a player, such as when an older player is near retirement, or when players could potentially get transfers from PV leagues to non-PV leagues. But thankfully, the same criteria I tried to stick to can be used for all these situations as well. So moving on to the criteria that I use to judge whether or not to sell a player. And the first one is the easiest one to judge. And that is, if I need to withdraw any money. In this situation, there's a couple of approaches that you can take on deciding who to sell. The first method, and this is the preferred option if there's an obvious candidate, sell the player you feel has the least short-term profit potential. Now the key focus here is short-term. If you're holding a player who's out injured for six months and you've already been through the initial roller coaster that usually comes with an injury on FI, then there's the possibility that you can sell out, withdraw the funds and get back in at a similar price on your next deposit. Or even better, if you think a player's hit peak and is on the downward slope, then use this as an excuse to take your profit and get out early. The second method, and this is the one that I would probably use if I needed to withdraw, is to sell equal amounts of all your holdings. And when I say equal amounts, I mean percentages, not number of shares. So if you hold 100 Neymar, 50 Pogba and 30 Messi, then you might sell 10 Neymar, 5 Pogba and 3 Messi, or whatever number of shares you would need to get to the required withdrawal amount. 
The second criteria, and this is a scenario that I usually run into, is that you found a player who you feel is better value than some of the other players in your port in terms of the potential return you hope to make over a given time period. For me, 100% over a year is the goal that I usually aim for. In this situation, I make a short list of the players who I think could have worse potential profits than the new pick, and I compare what my expected profit for each is over the target timeline. Now you'll not always get this right, and that's okay, because as long as you had a system and stuck to it, then it's as though you didn't have a choice to make at all really in the sale. An example of this is back in January, I ended up having to sell Alfonso Davies in order to fund my purchase of one of my pick of the day players, Jean Kevin Augustine. Now this was not an easy decision to make as I still thought that Davies had a bright future and was going to be a phenomenal player. But when I compared the two players, I felt that Augustine with rumours of move to Leeds and the potential route it could have for the Prem, had the bigger chance of returning 100% profit or more in the next 12 months. As it happened, Augustine initially rose much more than Davies. But since then he's fallen off due to lack of playing opportunities, whereas Davies has continued to rise and has actually almost doubled from the point I sold at. This is not the first time and it won't be the last time that this has happened to me or you, unless you hold the same players indefinitely. So it's something that you need to get used to and when you have a strategy that can help to deal with the pain of missing out on the big rises. So at Sadar is another good example of this. I owned him from last season at 33p and I think I sold out somewhere around the 65p mark which met my 100% profit target and meant I could free up funds for another player I thought was a better option. A friend of mine who also sold out at this time used to send me updates as he continued to rise. But for me it didn't really matter as if I thought there were better options at 65p I would have been even more convinced at 70p, 75p all the way up to his peak price of £1.56. So really I was never going to hold on to that price anyway. The third criteria is in some ways just the reverse of the second, which is when I feel like a player's reached a point where he's overpriced. As players rise closer and closer to the target profit, unless something's fundamentally changed, that reduces the expected future gains. When it reaches a point where I think the price has included some future events, like PB wins or a transfer, it can reach a situation where if these things happen, it was already expected so it wouldn't result in much of a rise, and if they didn't happen, it can end up in a fall. A simple example of this would be Neymar or Messi winning PB or Pogba winning media. It's expected that they'll win regularly, so unless they win a few in quick succession or go on long dry spells, the price tends to not react much. At this point I usually take the money and start looking for better options, but with most players deciding if they're at this point is a lot more difficult to judge. When I find myself in these situations, I sometimes opt to hedge my bets by selling a portion of the position. For example with Davies, I actually sold a third of my position at three different points on the way up his rise. This allows you to gain some extra profit if you timed it wrong, and if you were correct and cashed out before a drop in price, then you can be happy that you sold out a portion of your position at the perfect time and reassess. This strategy is aimed to manage your emotions around the inevitable fact that you will often be timing your trades imperfectly, helping to keep a clear head and prevent you from making rash decisions. And the final criteria that I would sell a player is if something that was a fundamental part of my reasoning for buying a player has changed. This could be anything from a major injury, a surprise exit from a European competition, a transfer or just a misjudgment of a player's potential by me. Once I see that I more than likely made a mistake then I exit the position regardless of the profit or loss. So that's all I have for you on when to sell a player. Hopefully you found this useful and if you do have any other questions then please let me know in the comments below. Again, if you're interested in some premium memberships to improve your trading, there are links to Football Index Club, Football Index Edge and to my Patreon page in the description. Thanks for watching and good luck on the index.